In today's video, I'm gonna review the Gassion on Girling Warwick at Balmoral Oxford in their vintage Rioja finish. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. The Balmoral design originated as a walking boot designed for Prince Albert in the 19th century. Certainly commonly seen as the boot, they also make a beautiful lace-up Oxford dress shoe. The defining characteristic of a Balmoral is the distinctive side seam that sweeps all the way along from the vamp to the back of the shoe, creating this parallel line to the ground. The facing for the laces and the vamp both extend to separate pattern pieces all the way around to the back of the shoe. This creates a beautiful visual element that sweeps back and elongates the silhouette of the shoe. Balmorals are a great alternative to a cap to Oxford and offer additional visual detail. The Warwick from Gaziano and Girling is a beautiful example of a Balmoral shoe. Shown here on the Deco Last in a beautiful vintage Rioja finish with its sharp square toe and broguing, this shoe is a beautiful example of a dress shoe that offers exceptional visual detail. It is certainly much more visually interesting than a traditional cap to Oxford. As with all of Gaziano and Girling's shoes, the quality of materials and make are both exceptional and done at the highest levels. The Warwick used to be a part of Gaziano and Girling's collection as their only ready-to-wear Balmoral. However, it is now only available made to order. This is a beautiful shoe and a model that I hope to soon add to my own collection. But first, let's talk about Gaziano and Girling. For those who don't know who the shoemaking firm is, they have risen as one of the wonder boys of the English shoemaking industry. When Tony Gaziano and Dean Gerling founded the company in 2006, they were the first new shoemaking factory to be opened in Northampton in over 100 years. Everybody thought they were crazy, and they probably were, but that's what allowed them to innovate and become so successful. Tony and Dean worked for a variety of bespoke shoemakers, designers, and Northampton manufacturers before joining together to launch their own line. Their aim was to update the otherwise classic English aesthetic and to bring an unprecedented level of handwork to their Goodyear welted factory made shoes. The whole key was to elevate the level of finishing of a factory made pair of shoes, thereby narrowing the gap between bespoke and ready to wear. Tony, with his experience in last making, brought design brilliance to the firm that you can see in every single one of their shoes. And Dean, as a bespoke shoemaker, brought the technical knowledge on how to elevate the craftsmanship and finish to bespoke standards. Few other shoemakers on the market try to incorporate so many elements of bespoke finishing into their ready-to-wear factory-made offering. Gaziano and Girling is easily making some of the finest ready-to-wear shoes available in the world today and certainly is amongst the pantheon of just a handful of ready-to-wear factory-made shoemakers doing shoes at this level. The Warwick is made on the Deco Last, which is Gaziano and Girling's trademark sharp square toe, but without the Art Deco finishing, which incorporates significant additional handwork and finishing into their Goodyear welted factory-made shoes. This last is a great example of how Gaziano and Girling offers a classic English-made shoe, but with an updated, more modern aesthetic. This shoe is somehow very fashion-forward, while at the same time somehow remaining quite English and conservative. I really enjoy the Balmoral design with its vamp sweeping all the way back to the heel of the shoe. This parallel line and the separation between the bottom and the top pattern elements offer an interesting visual departure from your classic cap to Oxford. Immediately, Tony Gaziano's shoe design brilliance is instantly recognizable in this shoe. Even though there is a lot going on with this particular model, it is still exceptionally elegant and put together. Every aspect of design, from the proportion to the lines to the shape to even the balance of the broguing, has been perfectly balanced. Combined with the construction and quality of materials, which we'll talk about later in greater detail, you can't help but desire this pair of shoes. Now that the Warwick is no longer a part of Gaziano and Girling's ready-to-wear collection, it has to be commissioned through their extensive made-to-order program. So a lot of the elements that you see on this shoe right here are just an example of the type of manifestation one could have with this particular uh, Balmoral design. This particular example, which was a part of their ready-to-wear collection, was made on the Deco Last, which features this very sharp square toe, 
for which Gatsiano and Girling is quite well known. Whenever you think of Gatsiano and Girling, you never think of a soft, round toe like something you would think of from John Lobb or even Edward Green. The shoe is finished in the vintage Rioja patina, which is Gaziano's mahogany. It features a nice deep red patina that's quite dark, almost black, but still offers the versatility of a beautiful mahogany. What I love about mahogany finishes, or in this case, the vintage Rioja, is the fact that it's a very versatile finish, especially for someone looking to add a little bit of color when they would otherwise wear a black shoe. This vintage Rioja color could be worn with a black suit, a gray suit, even navy or lighter colored suits, so it is a very versatile finish that certainly has its place in even the most conservative of wardrobes. And to commemorate the visit by the Prince of Wales to their factory, Gaziano and Girling actually made the Prince of Wales a shoe very similar in color to this one right here. So for gentlemen who traditionally wear black shoes, this vintage Rioja is a beautiful alternative. And with the proper mirror shine like what we have here with this model, the shoe actually looks quite black from the front, thereby further elevating the formality of this model. As with all Gaziano and Girling shoes, no effort is spared in the construction and finishing. Now, whenever we look at a pair of shoes from Gaziano and Girling, particularly this Warwick, what are the elements of quality that really stick out? First and foremost, let's start with the quality of the uppers. Gaziano and Girling uses the same quality of leather for all their factory-made shoes that they use in their bespoke program. Not only is this leather of the highest quality, a beautiful full grain, open pore leather that's gonna age beautifully and take polish and produce a beautiful shine, but it's clicked by hand. And what this means is that each of the individual pattern pieces are placed by hand on the actual leather before it is cut out. What this allows the clicker to do is to ensure that each pattern piece is being cut from only the best area of the skin that is unblemished. At factories that produce a higher output of shoes, oftentimes those pattern pieces are stamped out by hand without much attention being paid to the particular area of the leather being used. And next, the individual pattern pieces are skillfully and precisely sewn together. And what I love about Gaziano and Girling's upper is the high density single needle stitching that they use. Whenever you look closely, you can see that it's almost 16 stitches per inch that's being used whenever these pattern pieces are sewn together. Now the result of that is just a beautiful, tight and sleek aesthetic that just has a sharper look than patterns that are sewn together with a lower stitch density. That even extends to the pinking, which is the small little triangular indentations that you see along the edges of the pattern pieces. Again, with a lot of lower quality brands, you see these done with quite large pattern elements that again, just don't have the level of refinement that you find with a pair of shoes from Gaziano and Girling. This particular Warwick right here has a beautiful small pinking all the way across the cap and then all the way across kind of this vamp element that again, just creates beautiful visual detail to the shoe. One of the other elements of this shoe that I really appreciate is the juxtaposition of the larger broguing holes across the vamp and this Balmoral element, combined with the smaller broguing done along this top line. It just produces a nice visual balance where the lower elements carry more weight, but you still have that broguing kind of along the facings and the top of the shoe to give the pattern its visual richness. All of Gaziano and Girling's shoes have the traditional English five eyelets, but again, you can see how these have narrowing widths as they sweep up the facing of the shoe. It's just these small design details that whenever they combine together, just click to create an absolutely beautiful and elegant shoe. Continuing to the back of the shoe, you see that the heel base is beautifully placed underneath the heel. It sits nicely and tightly underneath the heel. There's no gaping, it's highly polished, and there's a slight pitch to the heel itself that just give it a nice, beautiful elegance. These are just some of the details of the uppers, but the real beauty of a Gaziano and Girling is hidden on the bottom of the shoe, which are just as exceptionally well finished as the uppers. Another hallmark of Gaziano and Girling's design is the narrow fiddle back waist which has become a Gaziano and Girling trademark. The narrow waist creates a beautiful sweeping line from the toe to the heel that is obviously and highly sculpted. 
This is especially difficult to achieve in a factory-made, ready-to-wear shoe that isn't being individually lasted by hand. It's this last definition that allows the shoe really to have a beautifully sculpted look and for these shapes to be seen once the shoe comes off the last. Now, my favorite way to test for last definition is with a handy pencil, or in this case, mountain pen. And if you drop it straight down from the uh, inside edge uh, of the upper, and then you look at the distance you have between that and then the waist of the shoe, you can see just how much shape is being lasted into this shoe. This actually requires a completely separate step where the upper is pulled over the last and then secured with the metal wire and left to sit on the last for several days for that leather to really hold the memory of the shape of the last. With less expensive shoes, you just don't see this amount of shape and sculpture in the finished product. Now the bottoms themselves, as I mentioned earlier, are just as much of a Gatsion on Girling trademark as the square toes are. You can see that the bottoms of these shoes are beautifully finished, and it's one of those elements, again, that separate a really high quality, ready to wear shoe at the highest level from everything else that's out there. One of the first elements that sticks out on the bottom is the fact that there is no visible channel stitching. Now what this means is that you don't see any of the stitches that's used to sew the outsole to the welt itself. And the reason for that is because Gaziano uses a technique called invisible channel stitching, where the leather here is peeled back, and then the outsole is sewn to the welt, and then that is glued back flush with the, with the outsole. The result is a beautifully finished bottom that doesn't have any visible stitching, and just creates a really heightened aesthetic that I absolutely love. Now the next element that is very unique to Gaziano is this tight fiddle-backed waist, right? So not only is it a narrow waist giving additional definition to the last itself, but it is also fiddle-backed, and that is this bump that you see going down the middle of the waist. It's just a small additional element that really creates beauty into these shoes and to the bottom themselves. Now in addition to those elements, uh, the entire bottoms are finished, uh, so it is inked in black right here and then in brown on the bottom. And you can see that a beautiful high quality heel base is being used with brass tacking that is primarily decorative and then a nice small uh, rubber top lift. Now the outsole and the heels are both oak bark tanned leather, which is a naturally tanned leather that takes up to nine months. This actually comes from a tannery uh, in England called Baker's. So it is an English oak bark tanned leather outsole. And that's important because it's that oak bark tanning process that really gives longevity and durability to the outsoles and water resistance. So an oak bark tanned leather outsole is gonna last three to four times longer on an ordinarily tanned leather outsole that you might find on lower quality shoes. As with all of Gatsion and Girling's shoes, they can be completely customized through their made to order program where you can choose from any of their seven last shapes a hundred different leather choices, any custom patina, and to even add custom medallions on the toe and your initials and uh, brass nails at the waist of the shoe. MTO shoes can be commissioned for an extra 250 pounds or about $300 and take around 12 weeks to make. Gaziano and Girling's website has an exceptional made to order interface that's fun to play with. So if you haven't seen their website, I suggest checking it out. The Gatsion and Girling Warwick is priced at 1,200 pounds made to order without VAT or about $1,500. There is no question that this shoe is an investment, but at this quality level, it's a shoe that you could easily expect to be wearing for decades. I just find that there's something intrinsically satisfied about wearing a beautiful shoe like this. Not only is it more comfortable, but I just love the beauty and the sculpture that you find in a really high quality shoe like this Warwick. This Warwick Balmoral in the vintage Rioja offers an interesting departure from your traditional black cap toe Oxford and could be worn in any of the same circumstances. This shoe is without question one that I can highly recommend. Everyone knows that I don't think that there's any limit to the number of black cap toe Oxfords a gentleman can have in his closet, but this Balmoral design is a beautiful shoe and I would really seriously consider adding it to my collection in both black and this vintage Rioja. If I was having this made, made to order myself, I would certainly probably first start with the vintage Rioja because I love the versatility of this redder finish.
The only thing I might change is having it made on a different last than the deco last with a slightly softer, more round toe, which fits with my more conservative classic aesthetic. But I could certainly wear this and get away with it anywhere that I would otherwise wear a round toed shoe. So for anyone looking to add a very traditional and conservative shoe to their wardrobe, but wants an alternative to the traditional cap toe Oxford, this Balmoral Warwick is an exceptional shoe and one that I can highly recommend. If you like this shoe, make sure you check out our other shoe reviews that we have on Gaziano and Girling, and especially the video where we visited with Tony Gaziano at their Savile Row store, where he showed us the shoe that they made for the Prince of Wales in a very similar finish. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality craftsmanship and tradition. If you haven't visited hangerproject.com yet, please do. We have the largest collection of luxury garment care and luxury shoe care products in the world, as well as other great clothing accessories like this basket weave sovereign grade dress tie. In today's video, I'm wearing my stroller, but without the vest. This jacket was made by Ravi Taylor uh, in London. He has a bespoke workshop off of Savile Row. I'm wearing it with our beautiful Kirby Allison sovereign grade basket weave tie. This tie is probably one of my favorite ties uh, of all time and one that I find myself wearing all the time. It works perfectly with the black jacket of my stroller and my white bespoke Charvet shirt. I'm pairing it with a white Simono Godard pocket square light gray trousers from Chris Despis made bespoke for me with single reverse pleats and tab trousers. I'm wearing it with a bespoke George Cleverly whole cut lazy men shoe uh, with elastic sides and my favorite Kirby Allison sovereign grade dark gray small dot melange dress socks.